Today, we're going to learn about stoichiometry. First, how do we define stoichiometry? Stoichiometry is the study of relative quantities of reactants and products in chemical reactions and how to calculate those quantities. So basically, in stoichiometry, we're going to quantify the amount of reactant and products in chemical reaction. We're going to determine how they are related to each other. This picture shows the one that first quantified the amount of particles of a particular element which we have as Amadeo Avogadro. Amadeo Avogadro had come up the specific number of particles which is equal to 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms, ions, molecules, or formula units. Avogadro's number have different units such as atoms for neutral element, ions for element with charge, formula units for ionic compound, and molecules for covalent compound. Next that we have is the mole. Mole is a term used to refer to the quantity of particles of a substance, either atoms, ions, molecules, or formula unit that is also equal to the Avogadro's number. Mole is the basic unit of quantity of element or compound. You have to take note that one mole of any element or compound is equal to Avogadro's number. Next that we have is the mass and the molar mass. Mass is the measure of the amount of matter in an object or substance. For example, we have 5 grams of copper wire. On the other hand, when we say molar mass, we are pertaining to the mass of 1 mole of an element in a compound which is numerically equal to its atomic mass, molecular mass, or the formula mass. Molar mass is the general term, but the specific term for the mass of an element is atomic mass. For the covalent compound, it's molecular mass. In an ionic compound, it is formula mass. And since we are pertaining to its mass per one mole, we have the unit for the molar mass as gram per mole. Now, let's find out how to compute for molar mass. This is the formula to get the molar mass of the compound. We have mm is equal to summation of the product of atomic mass of each element and the number of atoms of that element in the compound. First example, get the molar mass of dinitrogen pentoxide. The first step that you're going to do is to list down the elements on that compound. And those are nitrogen and then oxygen. And then following the formula, we have the summation of the product of the number of atoms and the atomic mass of each element in that compound. First, you have to know the atomic mass of each element. So first, we have nitrogen. The atomic mass of nitrogen is 14.01 as based on the periodic table. And then, oxygen, we have 16.00 grams. And then, you have to multiply it to the number of atoms of that element in the compound N2O5. So we have to multiply nitrogen to 2. Because the number of atoms is the subscript of that element in the compound. And then for oxygen, we have 5. And then, get the product. We have 28.02. And we have 80.00. And then, since we are pertaining to summation, just simply add this to. So we have... 108.02 with the unit gram per mole. Next that we have is the mass relationship in chemical reaction. In here we have what we call as the mole to mass conversion and the mass to mole conversion. In this conversion we will use the molar mass of the substance. For the mole to mass conversion, we are going to multiply the number of moles to its molar mass. On the other hand, for mass to mole conversion, we are going to divide the mass of substance to the molar mass or we are going to multiply the mass of substance to the reciprocal of the molar mass. You have to take note that 
mole to mass or mass to mole conversion could only be used for the same compound or same substance. Now let us try to convert mole to mass or mass to mole. For example, we have compound. how many moles of KCl or potassium chloride does 75 grams of the substance have? We have given the molar mass of KCl which is equal to 74.55 gram per mole. In this example, as you can see, we have given the mass of the substance and we're going to find the mole of that same substance. So meaning to say, we are going to have the mass to mole conversion. Okay? And in computing for the mole of KCl from the mass, we should put or write the given verse. So we have 75 grams of KCl and we also have the molar mass of KCl there. And then, we are going to determine which is the unknown value, and that is the moles of KCl. Then after that, you need to determine the formula that you're going to use, and that is mass of the substance or the compound times the reciprocal of its molar mass. Because uh, when we have the mass to mole conversion, it's actually the mass divided by the molar mass. But since in the vision, we have to reciprocate it and then transform it to multiplication, we have this formula. And this type of formula or process is what we call as the dimensional analysis. The next that we have is the solution. So for the solution, we just have to substitute the given value to our formula. Okay, so the formula that we have is mass of compound and the given mass is 75 grams of KCl times its reciprocal of the molar mass. So we have 75 grams times 1 mole over 74.55 grams. So when you write the reciprocal of the molar mass, you just have to use the unit 1 mole over G because it is the same with the gram per mole unit. Then calculate, you will have the answer 1.006 or 1.01 mole. So in solving a problem, we will use this format, GUFSA, wherein we have given a known formula, solution, and the final answer. Second example that we have is this. How many grams of carbon monoxide or CO are there in 6 moles of CO? that same compound. So in this case, we have the mole to mass conversion. And again, let's follow Gupsa format. So first, we have given and we have the moles of carbon monoxide and that is equal to 6 moles. The unknown value is the mass of carbon monoxide. So the formula to be used in mole to mass conversion will be mole of the substance or compound. The formula to be used for that problem will be mole of substance times the molar mass in the unit gram per mole. And as you can see, we have to use the molar mass of that compound. But in this case, we don't have the given value for the molar mass of carbon monoxide. So now, can you please give me the molar mass of that compound, carbon monoxide? Alright, so that is equal to 28.01 gram per mole and since we have now the molar mass of carbon monoxide and we have the mole of that substance as given we could be able to find the mass of carbon monoxide so just simply substitute the given to the formula so we have six moles of carbon monoxide times the molar mass 28.01 gram per mole cancel the same units and the final answer will be 168.06 Grams. Again, that is how you convert mole to mass or mass to mole of the same compound. Now, how about if we have different compounds? So, for different compounds, we could not directly convert mole to mass or mass to mole. In this case, we're going to have the mole ratio. A mole ratio is a conversion factor that relates the amounts in moles of any two different substances in a chemical reaction. The numbers in a conversion factor come from the coefficient of the balanced chemical equation. Take note that the equation should be balanced. So in this equation, N2 plus 3H2 to form 2NH3, the mole ratios are as follows. This is how to convert mass to mass of different compounds. We have here what we call as the long method and the short method. Example, 
for the balance equation, 2HCl plus Zn form H2 plus ZnCl2, how many grams of zinc are there in 86.00 grams of HCl? So for this example, we have given the mass of HCl and we're going to find the mass of Zn. So we're going to get the mass of different substance from another substance. And let's have Kupsa. So for the given value, we have the mass of HCl and that is equal to 86.00 grams. And the unknown value is the mass of zinc. And the formula that we're going to use will be the mass to mass conversion. In, we're going to have these three conversions. Mass to mole, mole to mole, and the mole to mass. So for mass to mole, we just have to multiply the given mass to the reciprocal of its molar mass to obtain the mole of A. And then after that, we're going to use that mole of A to convert to mole of B. And then mole of B will be converted to the mass of B using the molar mass. So for mole to mole conversion, we will use the mole ratio of B and A. So the mole ratio will be obtained from the balanced equation. So again, that is the ratio between the coefficients between the substance in the reaction. So as you can see from the formulas that we're going to use, we will be needing the molar mass of two compound or two substance. And that is the molar mass of the given, which is HCl, and the unknown, which is the zinc. So for the molar mass of HCl, that will be equal to Thirty-six point forty-six gram per mole, and the molar mass of zinc will be equal to sixty-five point thirty-eight gram per mole. So now, from this formula, we're going to get the mass of zinc. So first, let's have the mass to mole conversion. So for mass to mole conversion, we will be using the given mass of HCl, which is 86.00 grams. We will substitute that to that formula, and then we are going to multiply it to the reciprocal of its molar mass, which is 36.46 gram per mole. So we will have this. So 86 grams times 1 mole of HCl over 36.46 grams, and we will have the mole of HCl which is equal to 2.36 moles. Don't forget to cancel units which is grams of HCl. And then this mole of HCl will be used for the mole to mole conversion which is our next step. So for the mole to mole conversion we will be using the mole ratio and that mole ratio will be obtained from this balanced equation wherein we have the mole of B, which is our zinc, which is one mole, over mole of A, which is HCl, we have two moles. So the mole ratio between zinc and HCl is one over two. So let's have, or let us use the obtained mole of HCl and then convert it to the mole of zinc using the mole ratio between them. So we have mole to mole conversion as equal to 2.36 mole of HCl times 1 mole of zinc over 2 moles of HCl and we have 1.18 moles of zinc. And then finally, we will have the mole to mass conversion wherein the mole of zinc that we have obtained will be converted to its mass. So that will be equal to 1.18 mole of zinc times the molar mass which is 65.38 gram per mole we will have this and then the final answer will be 77.1484 or 77.15 grams of zinc so this method is what we call as the dimensional analysis and that is a long method wherein we separated the mass to mole conversion the mole to mole conversion and the mole to mass conversion Another way of solving this example or problem is using a short method wherein we just simply combine the three steps 
mass to mole, mole to mole, and then the mole to mass conversion in this equation or formula. And still, we're going to assume that the A will be the one or the substance with the given value and the B will be the unknown substance. In this short method, we will still use the molar mass of the two compounds, the given and then the unknown, and the mole ratio between them from the balance equation. Another way of solving this example or problem is using a short method wherein we just simply combine the three steps mass to mole, mole to mole, and then the mole to mass conversion in this equation or formula. And still, we're going to assume that the A will be the one or the substance with a given value and the B will be the unknown substance. In this short method, we will still use the molar mass of the two compounds, the given and then the unknown, and the mole ratio between them from the balance equation. Okay, so now let us substitute the given mass of A, the molar mass of A, the mole ratio between them, and the molar mass of B. So first, let's have the mass of A that is equal to 86.00 grams. So we have to multiply it to the reciprocal of its molar mass, which is 36.46 gram per mole, and then multiply it to the mole ratio between them, which is... From the balance equation, we have 1 mole of zinc over 2 moles of HCl and the molar mass of B which is equal to 65.38 gram per mole. So we will have this equation for the solution. So we have 86 grams of HCl multiplied to the reciprocal of HCl or the molar mass of HCl which is 1 mole over 36.46 grams times the mole ratio between them which is 1 is to 2 times the molar mass of zinc and then finally we will have the final answer as equal to 77.11 grams of zinc so as you can see there might be little difference but it's all right because the reason of that difference is because of the rounding off that we have on the long method but if you follow the steps properly you will still get the correct answer now to test your comprehension i want you to answer this question so from the same equation how many grams of h2 or hydrogen gas will be produced from that reaction For the long method, we have the mass to mole conversion. We have obtained 2.36 mole of HCl. And then mole to mole conversion, we have 1.18 mole of H2. And finally, the mole to mass conversion, we have the final answer, which is 2.38 gram of H2. So there will be 2.38 grams of H2 produced from that reaction. For the short method, we have the mass to mole. So we have to multiply the mass of HCl to the reciprocal of its molar mass times the mole ratio, which is mole to mole conversion. And then mole to mass, we have the molar mass of H2, which is equal to 2.02 gram per mole. So the final answer will also be 2.38 grams of H2. So the short method is recommended for those who have a scientific calculator because we just simply input all of this to the calculator and we will have the answer as 2.38 grams of H2. So when you input this to the scientific calculator, don't forget to write parentheses in between them so that you will not have syntax error. That's it for today. See you on my next one. Bye!